So we start the news from right here in Accra, where the Chief Executive Officer of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwisio Sei, has expressed worry at the low level of interest civil society groups have in issues of mental health. Now, according to him, despite the severity of mental health cases in the country, little or no attention has been given to the problem. Speaking at a mental health stakeholders meeting, Dr. Osei also said successive governments have done little to improve mental health care delivery in the country. Uh, Henry Kwesibidu's report has more. According to the Mental Health Authority, Ghana, compared to other countries in the sub-region, has improved in matters of mental health. Recent data from the Ghana Health Service reveals about 41% of Ghanaians have some kind of psychological disorder. Speaking at a mental health stakeholders meeting, wife of the Vice President, Samira Baumia, emphasized the need to make mental health delivery a priority in the health care system. She called on civil society groups, corporate groups, and all stakeholders to contribute to the development of mental health care. The health of our minds is as essential as the health of our bodies. It is so important that we look after our mental well-being the same way that we look after our physical health. As a nation, it's imperative that we make mental health care a priority. There is an urgent need for awareness creation across this country on mental health and care. For John News, Henry Kwesibedu's report. The Inspector General of Police was spared sentencing on Thursday thanks to the intervention of the Attorney General David Asantia Pietu had been found guilty of contempt by High Court Judge Justice Daniel Mensah over the takeover of a block of flats by the Ghana Police Service at the time his ownership was a subject of a court case. The IGP would have been handed a jail term or be made to pay a fine in the process. Joining us, Joseph Akable is reporting from the court that though the police chief has been spurred, his conviction has not been quashed. This issue has traveled from 1988 when a woman, Mrs. Agri, now deceased, filed a case against Redco Company Limited. She said they had failed to pay an amount of money owed her. She won the case as the court in a judgment attached the property, a block of flats at Medina in Accra. That is to say, if Redco fails to pay the money, the court will sell the property in order to retrieve the money for her. Redco appealed this decision but lost. Even before the court ruled on the matter, Redco gave out the property to the Ghana Police Service to house some of its officers. The applicants then went back to court to seek an order for the police to vacate the property and rather help execute the High Court's order to sell the facility. But the police, according to documents available to join News, failed to do so instead claiming ownership of the property. The lawyers then filed another case citing the IGP for contempt. They argued that once the flat is in the custody of the court, it is illegal for anyone to sell or buy it and that the police should have done due diligence. They also argued the police has failed to perform a statutory duty and for that matter have willfully disobeyed the orders of the court to provide security for the execution of the court order. Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Yebo Adami on Thursday informed the court an application for suspension of execution and a notice of appeal had been filed. A third application by the state is aimed at laying claims of ownership of the property for the Ghana Police Service. Mr. Dami also apologized to the court for the failure of the Inspector General of Police to make it to court. The case has been adjourned to November 1. Let's go to the Ashanti region now, where the Governing Council of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has been dissolved following recent events that led to students vandalizing property on campus. A statement by the, uh, the Education Ministry also announced a seven-member interim council, which will also see to reopening of the university in two weeks' time after Monday's indefinite closure. Now, ahead of the resumption, Love FM's Kwesi Deborah peeps into how the university's governance will determine its running. Here's his report. And, uh, unfortunately, Ghana, when we see a woman being the head of anything, we think that this is wrong. Where is this woman coming from? But we haven't accepted that women are even the best managers in our world. At public fora, at congregations, no speech oozes without hints of feminine names. Under its administration, various female organizations like Women in Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Ghana had wings to fly. 
KNUST saw her first female proved vice chancellor. Many people, however, believe he became drunk with this passion. They believe in his stupor, he invoked a demon trapped in the university chest for years. Suddenly, he became a public enemy. There are those who find it an abomination to blow into the wind an old tradition. Yes, sir, you cannot bring females to the hall for males to be displaced. People within the corridors of power taught Professor Bridanso, a perceived member of the opposition NDC, had made the government of the day unpopular. Nonetheless, open-minded persons like Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, Professor Kwesi Yanka, gave him thumbs up. But I think Kenya University has made a major statement and uh, held also by, by the courts of law um, that new realities emerging, mm. institutions ought to adjust themselves to new realities. Education Minister Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, however, had some reservations. So we cannot, if we want to create an equal level of the playing field, we cannot insist on our traditional uh, uh, problems like Katanga or Unity, or for that matter, any hall in this university should be reserved for the particular sense. I don't believe Africa Hall, because Africa is not only made of women. Close watchers of developments at KNUST conclude Dr. Poku Prempe's comment led to Africa Hall being included in the list. And that wouldn't pass without a fight. Security was heightened. It was taken overboard. Finally, a demonstration. After the mess, political figures like MPP National Youth Organizer Nana Boache is quoted to have written, Obedience will soon become history. Deputy Executive Director, National Service Scheme, Gift Yoware, and MP for Futu Alexander Fenyo Markin joined the sale. Now, there's a new board. It includes demonstration leader Kelvin Saar, Provost of College of Arts and Built Environment, Professor Joshua Yakwa, with whom Professor Obridanso contested and won the position. The concerned students In reaction to dissolution of the governing council, excited members of a group calling itself concerned students of KNUSD give a clear position to see him fired ultimately. What we are seeking for and what we are praying is those in the helm of affairs that we've, we've kept um, hammering on, we've kept on saying that the VC must go, the dean of stream must go. Professor Obidanso's hands are tied to a spark. Is the interim body? leading him to the firing range who cocks the gun who pulls the trigger reporting for joy news Chrissy debra Chrissy debra there with that recap for us but please remember we'll bring you the latest update about the dissolution of the governing council and thereafter what needs to be done but let's go to the upper east region next and the consequences of floods are usually hunger and disease outbreaks Communities in the region which had to deal with the effects of the spillage of the Bagri Dam are, however, having to also contend with the lack of access to portable water uh, to avert the outbreak of cholera and other diseases. Water and Sanitation NGO World Vision International has since been supporting some of the communities with water purifying kits. Oh, we had um, Albert, sorry, our Upper East Regional Correspondent, visiting some of the communities with World Vision International. The Upper East region this year experienced its worst floods since the year 2007, according to the Ministry of Agriculture. Hectares of farmlands and other properties were destroyed by floods after several days of torrential rain coupled with the opening of the spillways of the Bagri Dam in Burkina Faso. Upper East Regional Deputy Director in charge of operations at the National Disaster Management Organization, Paul Woma, recounts some of the damages caused by the floods. The 15 lives were lost as a result of the torrential rains and uh, about 53,000 acres of farmlands have been affected. Maize, rice, sugum, granules have all been affected as a result of the spillage of the Bakri Dam and the torrential rains. 
houses have also fallen, especially in the San Dima area, Pusa North District. A lot of houses have fallen there. Among the communities west affected by these floods is Kologo in the Kasana Nankana municipality, where some sources of water are reportedly polluted in the aftermath of the floods. According to community members here, they are now compelled to drink water from polluted wells and boreholes. Our children, they cannot go to school because of that. Every month they have to look for water to uh, bath before going to school. They normally go, get to school late. We always fetch water from the stream. Then when it floods, the, the stream, they are polluted. We cannot even get good water to drink. We always work from a far away to fetch water and come and drink. Fortunately, World Vision International Ghana, a non-governmental organization, has some remedies to this problem. The Water and Sanitation Centered NGO has provided the people of the Kolugo community water purifiers. The powdery substance, when mixed with water from the well and stead, removes impurities in the water, thereby making it safe for consumption. Timothy Amangbe Akampa Badai is World Vision International's Regional Operations Manager for the three regions of the North. So in total, about 3,000 boxes of the PNJ purifier, water purifiers, will be given to the community for them to purify the water for a three-month period. And then if by then we would have assessed the boreholes and treated them for, uh, for these boreholes to be safe for them to have water. We have also added soap to it, um, uh, so that they ca it can facilitate hand washing and uh, for the handling of water. We, we have been talking about safe water handling. This is an opportunity. Once you are going to handle water, you wash your hands neat so that you, the water that you are trying to treat is not contaminated. He led a team to demonstrate to the people of Kolugo the process of using the substance to purify water before it is consumed. Paramount chief of Kolugo, Naba Clifford Asobayere, was grateful to World Vision for their intervention in his area. Reporting for Joy News, Albert Sorry, Kolugo. Now, before we go, the former vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Professor Domwini Dabire Kupoli, is worried that students in the Nandom district do not like to read. A recent research conducted by the former vice chancellor revealed that this had led to candidates who sit the basic education certificate examination in the district performing rather poorly. Now, he has therefore, together with his wife, constructed and donated a state of the art library to the Nandom Kogle uh, basic schools uh, worth 160,000 Ghana cities. Rafiq Salam was there, and here's his report. Former Vice Chancellor for the University of Cape Coast, Professor Domine Debre Kupole, started his journey of education in 1962 under this very tree here at Kogole, a community located in the Nandom district of the Upper West region. At that tender age, he was aware of the importance of a library, but the shade of an ebony tree was the best his community could provide him for a library. Professor Kupole later received training in a chapel for two years until he entered middle school in 1968 in the same community. However, the middle school that he attended has now been pulled down to pave way for the construction of a modern library. The aim is to improve research and reading habits of learners within the Kole community and its surrounding environs. Now on retirement, Professor Kupole and his spouse, Dr. Alfredina Peng, have decided to take up the building of the new library because of a research that has shown that lack of reading was affecting the results of students in the area. It was revealed that a number of learners did not perform well. A number of them had poor reading uh, skills and a number of them could not even identify, identify simple, simple, very simple words and uh, could, let alone pronouncing them. And so we were challenged to 
um, put up this uh, library facility to encourage not only the children from the Kohli community, but the children from all over Nandom district um, to, as it were, use it to improve upon their learning skills, upon their reading skills, and to upgrade their knowledge. It is a library equipped with a state-of-the-art facility and cost the couple 1.6 million Ghana cities. The library has been dedicated to the late parents of Professor Kupole, Mr. and Mrs. Domini, for their efforts in seeing the professor through school. Stakeholders including the Ghana Library Board, Ghana Education Service, chiefs and people of the area converge at the Kohli Basic Schools to witness the opening of the beautiful edifice. Also present at the short ceremony was Interior Minister and Member of Parliament of the Nandam constituency, Ambrose Derry. My dear children, now is the time to read not to drink alcohol, not to smoke cigarette or marijuana, not to take, what do you call that one? Tramadol. The results we get for the JSS this year are not good enough. They are worse than we had when we were in school. Professor sat under a tree. He got better results than some of you are sitting in rooms now. So this library is to correct that. What I want you to do now is to make use of this library. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam, Nandan oh, Kuli. Great report there from Rafiq Salam, and yeah. that's it for the news. Yeah, definitely. What do we say? Uh, education is the bedrock of development. You have education, it means that you can have great knowledge to access better health. Um, also have um, good sanitation knowledge and so mm. you practice sanitation uh, better and then you can do many things plant families well know how you know yes, anyway indeed. yeah and a uh, good job uh, for prof kupoli there uh, honoring his parents great that, work uh, great wonderful, work uh, great work uh, edifice great work great stuff right well so much more to come on the am show and as always we'll kick it all off with the headlines from the newspapers newspaper review right after this AM News Headlines was brought to you by Ernest Chemist because everyone needs a chemist.